so thankful, isn't he? Yes, he is. Huh? He opened the door open. He blew the door open while you were sitting back there in the seat there. Amen. <clears throat> sitting at lunch today, and you never know what my granddaughters are going to say. Josie said, Granddad, let me ask you. If you're in school and you're taking a test and you don't know the answer to the question, can you write down, Jesus is the answer? <laughs> well, you probably could. <laughs> she said, well, if the teacher's a Christian, they've got to agree with it. Jesus is the answer. I said, well, what if you got an atheist? She said something. I didn't catch it. I'm still too surprised with the question. <clears throat> but she's right. In one sense, Jesus is the answer. Is he? He's the answer to all things. We we'll just trust Him. He is so, so faithful. Turn your Bibles, if you would, please, to Psalm chapter 48. Psalm chapter 48. Psalm chapter 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north and the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Selah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of the temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark you well for her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that you may tell it to the generations following. For this God is our God forever and ever. And he will be our guide even unto death. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Often I think that we get discouraged because we can't see God's long-term range of guidance for our lives. So we kind of kind of get discouraged sometimes. But we need to remember that God has not promised to... He, he, he's promised to guide our steps, hasn't He? Each step that we take. And I think that He, he reminds us that in Psalms chapter 23 when He says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So we kind of get discouraged when we can't see the long range of things. But as Libby has sang, sang there in her song, that God remains faithful to us through all things. So tonight I want us to look again at another Fanny Cosby song. And this one says, All the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me. That last verse of Psalm 48 says, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our God even unto death. So look at that song. I'm not sure what page it's on. Eight. Eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. Page 680. You, you're welcome to look at that song if you'd like. But that first verse says, All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. But have you thought about that first part? All the way my Savior leads me. Isn't it wonderful to know that when we come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, that He says, now I will take you and I will lead you all the way. You know, as well as, you know, I've told you many times, you know me pretty well by now, that I like to watch westerns. And the older, the better. You know, the older the western, the better. The, the new ones I don't care a whole lot about, but I like those old ones, especially the black and white. And man, I, I just love wagon trains. I really do. I just love wagon 
wagon trains, to, to see them going through this hard and desolate countries and all these things, and this land that they're going to, up into the mountains and all this. And a lot of times, you'll see the scoutmaster, you'll see the guy who's leading them, and sometimes along the way, he gets killed. And so somebody else has to take over. So they begin to wonder, will this same guy be able to lead us the way that the original scoutmaster did, the leader of that? Will he be able to take care of us and get us to where we're going? Because most of the time, the guy that's the, that's the leader of this thing, the, the wagon master, I should say the wagon master has been down that road time and time again. And he knows how to go. He knows where the watering holes are and all these things. So when he gets killed out, then the wagon train begins to say, Oh no, the guy's going to take over. Will he be there? Can, does he know the way? Well, I'm glad to report tonight that when Jesus saves us, he says, I'll take you all the way. Amen. And the thing about it is, he's already been down the road that we're traveling. That's the thing about it. He's been there. And he knows, he knows our every step that we're going to take. And he says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He knows so all the way my Savior leads me. That's why that we can rest assured for the fact that when we come to know Him as Lord and Savior, that we can be sure of the fact that we're going to heaven because Jesus said, I'll take you there all the way I will lead you there. I've never been there. Don't know how to get there in a sense. But I do know the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. Because He's the way, the truth, and the life. So He's been there all the way my Savior leads me. And then the second part of that first part says, What have I to ask beside? What more could I ask of our Savior but to lead me all the way home? Wow, I think as Bill mentioned a moment ago about the blessings that, that we have every day. Man, those are just benefits. You know, those are just benefits of being a Christian. Those are things, you see, the, the important thing about being saved is that we have eternal life, our sins have been forgiven us, and everything else is just good old-fashioned benefits that we have. But what more could we ask of Him than for hear Him to say, I'll lead you all the way home. <clears throat> the wagon master made his, his plan. He said, listen, he would tell the people how to prepare the prepare for their journey and say, here's what you need to do. Don't take anything that's unnecessary with you. He said, because there'll be time we may even have to lighten the load. But I'm glad today that my friend, that when I came to know Jesus Christ, my load was lightened. Yes. It was lightened at that point because my sins were forgiven me. My burdens were lifted at Calvary, the song said. So now he says, what more can I ask than that? Than for him to lead me and guide me. As I said in the message this morning, that his word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And what more can I ask than him showing me the way to get there and leading me? And you know, uh, so often I think, and you hear me say this a lot, so often sometimes when us men are traveling, and uh, we always know shortcuts that sometimes don't turn out to be shortcuts, and uh, we always go sometimes and we kind of turn make the wrong turn and we, how that we are always so, uh, we, we know everything so we don't ever want to ask anybody how to get there. We don't want to admit that we were wrong. We just, we'd rather go 100 miles out of the way and get back on the right path than to go 5 miles out of the way and ask somebody how to get back on the right road. <laughs> Isn't that something? Guys, we're just that way, aren't we? Yeah. But the thing about it is, I'm glad today that all we, what we can ask, what more can we ask than to say that Jesus, I know you're leading me all the way. And then it says, can I doubt his tender mercy? Can we doubt his mercy? Look how, look how merciful that God has already been to us. His mercy is so real to us. God's mercy by not giving us what we deserve. Because let's face the fact. We deserve hell. The way that we were. But God in his wonderful mercy said. Instead of hell. I'll give you Jesus. And that way Jesus can lead you home. So his tender mercy. Who through life has been my God. Now get this. I think. You know, we, we, we love that great psalm, Psalm 23. We love that. But look at this. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I thought about that. And you have to realize that a shepherd, you know, you, 
in, in, let's go back to my westerns again. In a cattle drive, you've got men on horses on each side of the cattle. You've got them in the back of the cattle, and they say, yeah, get them up here, you know? And they say, head them up, head them up, move on or all high. I'll get a commercial in there in a minute. <laughs> but the thing about it is, you see that, and they are pushing those cattle. But when it comes to sheep, the shepherd is never pushing the sheep, but the shepherd is in front leading the sheep. You thought not think about that. Leading the sheep. And so David said, the Lord is my shepherd, meaning him, then he, gonna, he leads me. He said, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. That's what a shepherd does when he leads, isn't it? No wonder Fanny Crosby could write, who, who through life has been my guide, has been my guide. He has led me in the paths of righteousness. He has restored my soul. There's been times that he leads me beside those, those still waters. And he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And then he says, Because of that, thou repairs the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's what a shepherd does. He leads. He's not pushing. He's not prodding. But he's leading us along. I, I love that song that says God leads his dear children along. Not pushing and prodding, but leading. So no wonder she could say who through life has been my guide. And then it says... Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. Think about that. That comfort that comes only from God. I, I realize that we, can, we try to say things and, and, and bring comfort to those who are hurting and all these things. But folks, let me tell you, there's nothing like divine comfort. That word divine means coming from God. And God gives that divine comfort of saying, it'll be okay. It will be okay. And then, here by faith, in Him to dwell. We are no longer walking by sight, but now we are walking by faith when we know Him as our Savior. We're believing Him to get us through the situations of life. We're believing Him to lead us and to guide us. Squire Parsons wrote that great song that Jamie sang so often for us, Beulah Land. Last part of it says, by faith. It said, by faith, I'm looking over the, over the river by faith. Again, we don't know, we can only imagine what heaven's going to be like. But by faith, we believe we'll be there. We believe we'll be there. Why? Because we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. So we live here by faith. Trusting Him, as I said this morning, for our needs of our lives. We trust Him, and by faith we receive those. He said, for I know, get this, for I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. It's hard to understand what he says in Romans. He said that, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord to those who are called according to His purpose. He did not say everything was going to be good. But He said all things will work together for the good. And I don't know how He does it. But God does all things well. Why? Because He's the same God that's on the mountain as, as He is in the valley. But God doeth all things. No matter what befall us, he doeth all things well. Not everything, again, is going to be good in our lives. We understand that. But, but God does all things well. God has the answer. God has the answer. So no what, whatever, whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. Then look at verse 2. She starts it again all the way. My Savior leads me. <laughs> Cheers each winding path I tread. Cheers me on. I think what the scripture says in, in Hebrews when it talks about, said, uh, uh, you know, about such a great crowd of witnesses there. And I get to thinking that some, maybe sometimes in, in heaven, and, and again, this is just what we imagine. Maybe sometimes in heaven we think that there are loved ones who've gone are cheering us on down those winding roads that we take sometimes. But more importantly, 
Jesus is cheering us on. I think <clears throat> before, and don't get me wrong when I say this, but before cheerleading became a sport, it was a group of young ladies that would cheer a ball team on, trying to inspire them, trying to get them going. They went over in the corner and said, oh, we don't believe you can do it. But they were standing there no matter how much behind they would be. They would try to cheer them on and say, you can do this. I think that's what Fanny Crosby means when she says here, he cheers me each winding path I tread. Because you see, the road that we travel is not always so straight, is it, in our life? Sometimes there are winding roads that we go through. But yet Jesus cheers us on and says, you can do it. I always love the little story about Thomas the train. <laughs> Heard a lot of that. <laughs> I think I can. When you go up the mountain, said, I think I can. No, I first voice thought, I can't do it, I can't do it. Then all of a sudden they said, yeah, you can. I think I can, I think I can. And it gets to talk, well, I know I can. Why do we know that we can? Because our Savior is cheering us on. He said, it gives me grace for every trial. Grace for every trial. I don't know if any of you in here ever been through a trial or not. <laughs> yeah, you're making a laugh at me now, aren't you? Because we all have. And some may be greater than others, but yet it's trials in our life. But isn't it, isn't it amazing how that, that He gives us grace that's so sufficient for every trial. Why? Because he leads us all the way. He feeds me with living bread. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He feeds us with the living bread, not just, not just the physical bread that we have, but, but, but by the word of God. Jesus said to Satan one time, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So here it is. We have that living bread that He feeds us on. And He does that. When we're hungry for His Word, when we need satisfaction, when we're longing and thirsting after righteousness, He says we'll be filled. Why? Because He feeds me with the living bread. And though my weary steps may falter, hmm, you ever get tired along the way? You ever falter along the way? Have you ever found yourself not being as faithful as you used to be and you've kind of, kind of faltered? Wow. He says that even through that, that even, though my weary steps may falter, we get tired. Matter of fact, I don't know what the conversation was uh, with Jeanette and Josie again, but like I said, we get enlightened when we go. And the older we get, there we get, we get more enlightened. <laughs> And I heard Jeanette say to Josie, yes, but Jesus even had to come apart into a desert to rest a while. But we falter. Even though our weary steps may falter. And my soul a thirst may be. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. He said, don't be weary in well-doing, doesn't he? Because we reap what we sow. But don't be weary and well done. So when we find that our footsteps are faltering and we, we get thirsty and our soul is thirsty, and but gushing from the rock before me, right before us, is that spring of joy that we can see. Wow. That spring of joy that only comes from Him. And then, verse 3, and actually, the last verse. You'll like that. <laughs> Verse 3 says this. Again, all the way my Savior leads me. All the fullness of His love. We sang about that in the song tonight, about love. We, we preached about this morning about God's love. All the fullness of it. No one could ever love us like God loves us. Like Jesus loves us. No one possibly could. We understand that. But oh, the fullness of his love is perfect. He said, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. Hmm. Because of his love, he said, one day we'll have perfect 
rest in our Father's house above. I don't know about you. Of course, we don't, <clears throat> we don't travel much. <laughs> you know that. But when we are away, it's hard. It's hard to sleep in a motel bed. It's hard to sleep in a bed when you're away from home. It is to me. It may not be to the interested, but it is to me. And you really don't rest. So when you, when you know that you're going home and when you get home and you get in your own bed, oh man, and it may not be different than anybody's bed anywhere I've slept in, but the fact of the matter is, it's at home. That's what makes it rest. Perfect rest. Well, Fanny Crosby writes the song and says, Perfect rest to me is promised. Not here. Not here in the now. But promised in my Father's house above. Wow. Going home. Going home. And that's where the rest, the final rest will be. And when my spirit, clothed, immortal, wings its flights to rounds of day, this my song to endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. And then one day, she says, and one day, when my spirit that's clothed with immortal wings its flight, makes its flight to realms of day, this my song through the endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. <laughs> we were listening to some of the gators last night, the older ones said, Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And I think as they were singing that song, and Vestal was singing that song, and, and, and get to thinking about how that in my hand no price I bring. I think about that every time she sings that song. But in my hand no price I bring, simply to the cross I cling. We can spend our days here telling people how to get to heaven, and we should. That should be our desire as a church. But think about this. Throughout the endless ages, as we're telling them here, Jesus will lead you all the way. But when we get there through the endless ages, we can say, Jesus led me all the way. He brought me through. Nothing I've done on my own. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nothing I've done. But we can say, Jesus led me all the way. And you know what? Jesus has never failed on a promise, has he? He never has. There's that never ending, never, never changing love that he has. And so I think he will never, he won't even fail us this close to home. He won't do it. Why? Because we know that he will lead us all the way. <laughs> we can have. And, and I want to close with this, but, but we can have perfect rest in every stressful situation because we are confident that Jesus is leading us every step of the way. Every step of the way. Too often... I think when we walk in this life that too many times we look down to find out exactly where our steps are rather than looking ahead. And, you know, it's just like as I said before that when we're plowing, you know, back home plowing that, that garden behind that horse. <laughs> and if you're, if you're looking back, then nine out of ten times when you get to the end of that row, it's not going to be straight. <laughs> Trust me. It's not going to be straight. It's going to be crooked. It may even bear the right of way to the left because we're looking back. But as you're looking ahead and you're looking straight ahead. And I thought about that with our life with Christ. We can have perfect rest in every stressful situation because of the fact that we know that He's guiding us every step of the way. Every step. We're not, <clears throat> does that mean that sometimes that we won't get a step in a pothole? No. Thanks. You're welcome. No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
there will be potholes in our life. But Jesus said, just get up and go. Come on, follow me. I'm still leading. I'm still leading. Because you see, it's not just the here and now. But it's our Father's house that He's leading us to. He's taking us home. So don't let the cares of life get you down. Just remember that He will lead you all the way. And when you get there, you can say then, Jesus led me all the way. I didn't have to fear. I didn't have to fret. Oh, although we do, I understand that. I'm not here to tell you that we'll never fear, we'll never fret. I'm just saying we don't have to. I'm not sitting here telling you that we don't ever worry because we do. If, you're, if you have a family, you worry sometimes. But we really don't have to because if we let Him lead the way, it's going to be okay anyway. We just can't see down the road. But He can. He can. Father, tonight I thank You for leading us. I thank You for guiding, not prodding, but guiding and leading. And you're leading us all the way. You're bringing us that peace and that joy to our lives. And Lord, in all situations, you're there. I thank you for that. But God, tonight, I just pray you'll speak to hearts. There may be someone here that has not trusted you to guide them. They're trying to do it on their own. But Lord, speak to that heart tonight that they'd realize that Jesus is the only way. Thank you for guiding each step that we take. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to be able to follow. But Lord, we follow with faith, believing that you do all things well. So we thank you for that. Have your way now, I pray in Jesus' name.